Morning everyone, I'm Isaac, and I'm a software developer who can never decide what to focus on. Today, I'd like to introduce you to Bevy, a game engine written in Rust that I've really come to enjoy working with. If you haven't heard of Rust and you want to learn, I highly recommend looking at No Boilerplate's videos on the subject, who is also my inspiration on making videos in the first place. Bevy is a lovely game engine to work in, and that comes without any catches when it comes to performance or ability. There's no proprietary framework you must work within, and there's no strange domain-specific language you must learn to get started. Simple functions and structs do all the work for you. Additionally, Bevy is completely open source and funded by the community, which means you don't need to fret about how your game will pay for it or if it will go under anytime soon. If you're dreaming of going big, Bevy will be there for you every step of the way. To get started, we'll go ahead and make a new Rust project using Cargo, Rust's amazing package manager. If you've never used Cargo, don't be afraid, as it's pretty much best in class. Run this command in the terminal in whatever folder you want the project to live in, then open up the folder in your favorite text editor. For folks new to programming, I recommend Visual Studio Code with the Rust Analyzer extension installed. Next, we'll add these changes to your cargo.toml. This imports Bevy and enables dynamic linking, which makes your compiles much faster. It also applies a small amount of optimization to your code and a large amount of optimization to your dependencies, making your dev builds much more performant. Finally, let's rewrite our main.rs. All this does is spin up a new Bevy instance, add all the default plugins to it, which do things like window management so you don't have to do it yourself, and run it. It is time to compile. You'll note that this will take a while, so while this first compilation run is happening, go ahead and grab a cup of coffee or tea. Thankfully, Cargo is amazing, and once we've compiled our dependencies, the only thing we need to recompile going forward is our code, not anyone else's. If you run into any problems, make sure you read the error text. Odds are, you're just missing a system package or two, especially if you're on Linux. Success! Our game isn't doing anything yet, but we have a running app, and that means we can do whatever we want. Let's talk about how Bevy actually works. Unlike other engines that use object-oriented designs to facilitate game behavior, Bevy makes use of an Entity Component System Model, or ECS. This is a super fast way of storing the kind of unstructured data that lives in a game. Let's go over what those terms mean. Components are basic pieces of data with no behavior. That part's important. This can be things like an inventory or a health component. Components can be made up of any number of fields, but they all come as a single package. You can't have half a component. Entities are collections of components which represent a game object. This can be any number of things in your game, including the player, enemies, the camera, terrain, a chest, particle systems, etc. The only thing that determines what kind of thing an entity is, is what components it contains. Put another way, you can think of entities and components as a big table, with entities as rows and components as columns. Each entity must have at least one component, but there's no limit to the number or the combination of components an entity can have. Systems are stateless functions that operate on entities and components. Systems don't have any state. Instead, Bevy keeps track of the entities and components separately and uses queries and commands to allow systems to work with them. By completely separating state from behavior, Bevy allows you to create complex game systems that are massively reusable without much thought. It gets out of your way and lets you write the code that really matters. Now, with that explained, let's make our first system. Bevy's systems are triggered by various schedules. The two that you'll probably use for now are Startup and Update, but there are others with specific use cases, and you can even make your own. Here, we're registering our Setup system to make it run on Startup. The system itself isn't doing much yet, just spawning in the in-game camera, but we'll change that now. Let's add a small circle to the center of our screen. You'll notice that we had to add a couple new parameters to our system. These just allow us to get handles to new meshes and materials. Additionally, we added a new component. We'll get back to that in a minute. For now, compile your game and see it run. Success! But Isaac, you say, this isn't a game yet, we're just rendering a circle. That's where you're wrong. Are you ready for this? Yeah, that's right. Input handling. We're going to make our circle move. Not to make it too complicated, though. For our example, we're just going to be making our circle respond to basic WASD key presses. We'll be taking advantage of Bevy's built-in input hooks, but other libraries do exist that extract this away a bit. To start out with, let's make another new system. This system has a query that returns transform components, which include position and rotation data. Specifically, we only want transform components from entities that also have a player component. Remember when we made that? It's nothing special and doesn't even store data. 
we can use empty components like this as marker components, which make it easier to select specific kinds of entities, like our player entity here. Next, we're going to loop through all the entities that this query gives us. Obviously this will just be one player in this instance, but you can use this with things that may have many entities, or even none. We need to know what buttons are being pressed in order to respond to them, so we'll go ahead and add another parameter. This isn't a query, but instead gets a reference to the button input resource within Bevy. We'll also add a direction vector at the start of our loop, as well as the code to use that vector to update where our player is. Notice that we've made a move speed constant up above our function. You don't have to do this, but I personally prefer to avoid nameless magic numbers in my code. Finally, it's time to write the code that determines where our player is moving towards. This part is relatively straightforward. Just check if a key is pressed, and if it is, nudge the direction in the appropriate direction. You'll note that we check both key directions, even if we've already detected one. This means that if you were to hold down both A and D, your player wouldn't move horizontally, rather than one direction overriding the other. This may or may not be how you want your player to move, but it's easily changeable. Let's add our new system to our game, this time running under the update system. The update system will run on every frame. Let us witness the fruits of our labor. Success! We are now able to move our circle around on the screen and even off it. Obviously there's more to game design than knowing how to move a circle around, but sometimes the technical side is the hardest part to break into, so hopefully this helped you out. Here are some really good resources that I took advantage of when I was first getting started in Bevy. You'll find tons of great tutorials and ideas here. Additionally, consider joining the Bevy Discord server. There are tons of helpful folks over there who will be more than happy to assist you if you're stuck on something. Thanks for joining me today. I hope to make more fun and informative videos like this one going forward, sharing my passions with all of you. If you liked it, please consider liking and subscribing to see what I make going forward. If you'd like to support me, you can find me on Coffee, where I am accepting donations. This money will go towards funding various projects and generally making sure I can keep putting food on the table. The code for this video, as well as clickable links for everything I've shown, will be in the description. I've been Isaac. Have a great rest of your day.